Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahabushai, Bahashem, Barakahakwadash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahawa, Bahashem, Yahabushai, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who ruled and teach well. In peace and salutations to you, sincere Aki, I'm out there pushing this word and truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May your brothers endure until the end. Shalom. This is the brother Raya coming at you with another lesson. And in this lesson, I'll be profiling this article from the economic collapse blog dot com titled you can't get blood out of a stone. U.S. consumers have been squeezed bone dry as the U.S. economy falters. And hey, there's a lot more squeezing to come. And those bones are going to become bone powder. Because things aren't going to get better for the U.S. economy or the United States of America as a whole. Inflation is going to turn to hyperinflation. The cost of living crisis is going to continue. There are going to be more job layoffs. And uh, what? Ultimately, the U.S. economy is going to collapse. And there's going to be chaos in the streets of America. And that's exactly what the elites, such as the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, want. They want that ordo ab KO to bring that order, which is ultimately bringing in that new, you know, digital system, that NW0, that great R-E-S-E-T, that fourth industrial revolution, where you'll have 15 minute cities, CBDCs or central bank digital currencies, bug burgers, and ultimately having that C-hip implant in you, which is the M-A-R-K-O-F-T-H-E-B-E-A-S-T, in Revelation 13, verses 16 to 18. But ultimately, you know, this is the will of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, bringing these things to pass, you know, to fulfill biblical prophecy. A recent survey discovered that 79% of Americans believe that the U.S. is on the wrong track right now. As a nation, we may not agree on much, but this is one thing that almost all of us can agree on. Needless to say, the economy is the number one reason why so many people are dissatisfied with the direction that the country is heading. Over the past four years, the cost of living has risen much faster than paychecks have. Hey, you've got uh, thousands deleted in North Carolina, in Tennessee from that hurricane. You know, you got people living paycheck to paycheck. All these issues American citizens are going through, but yet they keep, uh, you know, passing billions of dollars worth, tens of billions of dollars worth of aid packages to go to those dead men over to Ukraine and all these other various adventures that, uh, you know, the U.S. government is involved in all across the globe. This government doesn't give a shit about its citizens, so it doesn't matter if uh, legs up Harris or uh, Donald Duck Trump wins. Because, you know, the pre the president's already pre-selected and they're still on board with the agenda of the elites, the demolition of America. And as the result of the standard of living has been going down, now we have reached a point where tens of millions of U.S. consumers have been squeezed bone dry. And as a result, businesses are failing all over the nation. Go to my first precept. In Isaiah chapter 24, I'm going to read verses 7 to 11. The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all the merry hearted do sigh. As we just read, a new survey showed that 79% of Americans are, uh, you know, stressed out about the cost of living crisis and the state of the U.S. economy because it's becoming, you know, ever increasingly hard to get by. The mirth of the tabret ceaseth. The Norse of them that rejoice endeth, the joy of the harp ceaseth, and we're coming into these holiday seasons. And as it's going to say later on in the article, this is looking to be one of the most stressful and tight holiday seasons, you know, in recent years, because people just don't have the money to afford to go out and buy pres presents, buy food, throw parties or do anything like that. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it instead of drinking to, you know, celebrate a promotion or a raise or to have good times. People are drinking and doing drugs to drown out the reality of their destitute situations. 
the city of confusion is broken down and America is known as Babylon the Great in the scriptures and Babylon in the Hebrew is Babel, which means confusion by mixing. So the city of confusion, America, is broken down. As you can clearly see all around you, and as we're about to read about in that article, every house is shut up. Businesses are faltering because, you know, consumers can no longer afford to, you know, frequent them as much. So what, they got to tighten their belts, shut down locations, and lay off workers that no man may come in. There's a cry, a crying for wine in the streets. And that isn't talking about, uh, you know, literal wine. That's talking about, you know, answers out here. You know, people are looking at these alternative media sites, uh, news outlets, or even to Kamala Harris or Donald Trump for answers. But there is no answer that you can find amongst men. The only answers you're going to find is through Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, through the scriptures that his prophets are out on the highways and byways preaching, as well as putting up video epistles like this. And the, you know, the forecast is bad weather. There is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. Traditionally, the performance of the home improvement industry has been a very important economic harbinger. And at this moment, the home improvement industry is really struggling. And, you know, the algorithm on YouTube has been sending a lot of uh, Generation Z videos, you know, in my recommends. And I've been watching them. And it's just, you know, people of uh, Generation Z talking about how they have no future. They're never going to be able to buy a house or live up to the standards of uh, the majority baby boomer parents or Gen X parents. <laughs> so, you know, hey, that American dream is dead. You know, getting a home was, you know, seen as the, uh, you know, the standard to show that you're really making it. But, you know, a lot of people don't even have the idea of a home in their mind and people that already have homes are struggling to you know pay their mortgages and things like that and as a result what you know these different home improvement companies are struggling because people for one can't afford homes or what looking to sell their homes and not even worried about the upkeep because that's becoming too expensive and at this moment the home improvement industry is really struggling for example true value has been doing so poorly that it was finally forced to file for bankruptcy. True Value, a 75-year-old hardware store brand, has filed for bankruptcy and is selling substantially all of its operations to a rival, the company announced Monday. But, but you know, I'ma just hit the you know the highlights of these different paragraphs. Meanwhile, Home Depot says that sales in 2024 will be quite will be down quite a bit from 2023. The home improvement retailer said it now expects full year comparable sales to decline by three to four percent compared with the prior fiscal year. It had previously expected comparable sales, a metric that takes out the impact of store openings and closures and other one time factors to decline about 1%. In an article that I posted last week, I mentioned that Home Depot has been dumping millions of square feet of warehouse space. They wouldn't be doing this if they thought the economy would be turning around anytime soon. Another giant in the home improvement industry, PPG, has decided the time has come for mass layoffs. PPG, a global manufacturer of paints, coatings and specialty materials is laying off nearly 2,000 workers as it trims operation costs and sells off a chunk of its architectural business. The cuts will impact about 1,800 positions, primarily in the U.S. and Europe. PPG didn't disclose when the layoffs would occur. Meanwhile, Drug stores continue to shut down all over the nation at a staggering pace. In fact, Walgreens just announced that it will be permanently shutting down 1,200 stores. Walgreens said on Tuesday it would shut 1,200 stores 
over the next three years as new CEO Tim Wentworth plots a turnaround at the struggling pharmacy chain operator hit by sluggish consumer spending and low drug reimbursement rates. The restaurant industry is also being hit extremely hard in this difficult economic environment. Last week, I was saddened to learn that TGI Fridays has been closing locations all over the country. Your ability to enjoy a plate of loaded potato skins and $5 happy hour drinks is slowly dwindling as TGI Fridays has closed 12 U.S. locations in the past month and shuttered 35 restaurants across the pond. If TGI Friday anticipated that economic conditions would soon turn around, they would try to keep these restaurants open. But the truth is that the writing is on the wall and the writing is definitely on the wall and it's been on the wall through biblical prophecy. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 12. I'm going to read verses three to four in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble. And that's talking about these people that, you, you know, well versed in uh, the economy, you know, these economists, those on Wall Street, et cetera, et cetera. And best believe that these different uh, corporations and businesses go to economists to, you know, get an idea of, uh, you know, the economic conditions out here. And as it says in the days in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, bad economic forecasts out here, which has got people spooking, which has got these businesses tightening their belts, shutting down particular locations and what laying off hundreds to thousands of workers and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders or the workers cease because they are few. Many people getting laid off and those that look out of the windows be darkened. People looking out to try to find another job or look for good economic news. Hey, all they see is doom and gloom. Remember at the beginning of the article, 79% of Americans say that the U.S. is on the wrong track and the doors shall be shut in the streets. These businesses closing locations when the sound of the grinding or working is low and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Hey, just telling you right there that nothing good is coming. Hey, and it's getting so bad hey, that even these uh, these harlot houses, <laughs> these churches are struggling to make ends meet in ends meet. Even churches are feeling the pain. According to a recent study that was conducted by Lifeway Research, giving has been falling from coast to coast. Hey, people don't have the money to tithe anymore. And what are these uh, these uh, wolves in sheep's clothing? These pastors always like to say, shall a man rob God? Hey, you fucking, you fucking snake oil salesmen are getting what you deserve. A majority of Protestant pastors are blaming a poor economy for their struggling bottom lines after experiencing double digit declines to zero improvement in financial offerings from churchgoers over the last year. Data from a new study released by Lifeway Research show, but the sentiment is divided along political lines. Ba -ba -ba. What do all the examples that I just shared with you have in common? They all show that most consumers don't have a lot of discretionary income to spend right now. Or as Gerald Storch put it during a recent interview with Maria Bartomoromo, consumers are running out of money. U.S. corporate media outlets continue to push propaganda that the economy thrives ahead of the presidential elections cheerling the most recent retail sales print however most americans know msm is full of malarkey full of shit because inflation and interest rates force many to spend more but receive less many folks have depleted their personal savings and racked up insurmountable credit card debt just to keep up with rising food energy insurance and shelter costs this tox 
This toxic mix of inflation sparked by failed Bidenomics has hit low and middle income families the hardest, potentially leading to a breaking point this upcoming holiday shopping season. A hey, the mirth of the tabard ceaseth, all the joy in the land is darkened. It's very clear that consumers are running out of money. They're increasingly stressed by inflation and the exhaustion of their pestilence era savings. When you take a look over the last several years, what you see month after month, everyone talks about the consumers still spending. They might be, but they're spending less than the growth of inflation. Storch Advisors CEO Gerald Storch told Fox Business's Maria Bartiromo on Thursday during an interview, a hey, when the keepers of the house shall tremble. But what? Due to rising prices, people are having to spend more on goods that they're getting less of, and it's only going to get worse. This is Revelation chapter six. I'm going to start at verse five. And this is dealing with the so-called, you know, four horsemen of the apocalypse, which are just symbolic of different things that would be taking place during the last days. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And we're going to get that word penny in the Strong's. And it's Strong's G1220, denarion. And in the outline of biblical usage, denarius containing 10, a Roman silver coin in New Testament times. It took its name from it being equal to 10 asses, which was, you know, a Roman bronze coin which later, you know, it was, you know, made out of copper. What does that sound like? Currency devaluation, cutting those pure metals with cheaper metals, lowering the value. The same thing that's going on in the United States of America with the dollar losing its value went back on in ancient Rome. And it's beautiful because what? America is also Rome all over again. It was the principal silver coin like the U.S. dollar of the Roman Empire. From the parable of the laborers of the vineyard, it would seem that a denarius was then the ordinary pay for a day's wages, because in the ancient world, and especially according to the law, a man was paid the very same day he worked. It wasn't where, you know, people out here are paid every week, every two weeks, God forbid, every three weeks, which is just complete wickedness out here. So what's it saying? A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, you know, spending damn near your entire paycheck just to get, you know, the base level amount of goods, just enough to, you know, feed yourself damn near. That's how bad it's going to get out here. That is the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. Millions of U.S. consumers have been squeezed and squeezed and squeezed and now they are bone dry. Last year, I warned my readers that we had reached the economic tipping point and now things are starting to roll downhill very rapidly. And hey, it's going to continue to snowball and roll downhill before it's that economic cut avalanche that's going to bury you people out here. But now I'm going to close it out in Ezekiel chapter 7. I'm going to read verses 12 and verse 13 in the KJV. And I'm going to also get it in the NLT or New Living Translation. New Living Translation. This is Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 12. The time has come. The day draweth near. Let not the buyer rejoice nor the seller mourn for wrath is upon all the multitude thereof in the NLT. Yes, the time has come, the time of great judgment, the time like no other of Jacob's trouble. The day is here. Buyers should not rejoice over bargains 
And, you know, while things are looking bad for a lot of people out here, you've got a lot of these uh, economists and other people that are, you know, real into assets and, you know, gold and silver and bitcoins and having a varied portfolio saying that, look, it's going to be the biggest wealth transfer out here. People that don't know what they're doing economically are going to lose. And then you're going to be able to get those things for pennies on the dollar. I think of that uh, YouTube channel. This is John Williams, for an example. But hey, everybody is about to fill that pinch. And if you don't have your Habo Bahasham, your Habo Shai with you, hey, it doesn't matter about those pennies on the dollar. As it says, buyers should not rejoice over bargains, nor sellers grieve over losses because you're going to have a lot more to worry about than just losing your business, losing your house, or uh, you know, losing your job. For all of them will fall under my terrible anger. You got to worry about the judgments of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai coming. Death, destruction, the sword, famine, pestilences, world war, and ultimately nuclear missiles being shot to the ends of the earth. Now I'm going to go to verse 13. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return. Neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. NLT. Even if the merchants survive, they will never return to their business. So, hey, you may... <laughs> You may live long enough for when they come with that C hip to put things back in order and they'll throw you some crumbs here and there, here and there. But ultimately, what those nuclear missiles are going to hit America and turn this place into the biblical lake of fire and then that desolate, uninhabitable wasteland afterwards. And, and even before then, you know, you may be a, a business owner. You, you survived 2019 to 2021. And you may be able to just be floating by, but ultimately, <laughs> shit, your business is going down. For what the Most High has said applies to everyone. It will not be changed. As it says in Isaiah 55 verse 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. The doors shall be shut in the streets. The city of confusion shall be shut down broken down and the houses shut down that no man may come in no one person whose life is twisted by sin will ever recover and you know america is the most sinful nation on the face of the earth this society is built on everything clean contrary to the law statutes and commandments in the scriptures hence why it's going to get the worst judgment out here and what we're seeing right now is just the beginning of sorrows, as it says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 8. So you better buckle up. This ride's about to get a hell of a lot bumpier. But that's it with this video. With this video, I hope you sincere Akiam and Akwath were edified. Just keep strong. We are almost out of this final wicked captivity of the heathen nations, chiefly of the Edomites. And as always, I'm going to say Abad Babal, Kwam Yasharala, and until next time, Shalom.